see if this works. Okay, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us in this webinar. My name is Eitan, and I will show you uh, the feature we currently have available in Leo and some of the new stuff that's going to be available in the coming month. So, to start off, I'll just say that I'm using here the web version of Leo. So, this will run in any browser in any operating system. Uh, really, kind of plug and play. You don't need to install anything. I do recommend people install the desktop app because that's where you'll be. Uh, that's where, where you would be able to get the more advanced features once they're available. So it's worth getting used to it. it it's also very nice to have it uh, side by side with whatever program you're working with. So how do you download Leo? You have here this uh, profile button, profile area. You can get the desktop app, download exe file, and just run it and it installed. It's very straightforward. Um, some more things we have before I'll get to the actual features is here we're in the chat interface. You get it by this button. We have the ideation interface we'll talk about soon. Back to chat. Here we have a history of everything I've ever worked on, which is a lot. You can make a new chat here. You can also make a new chat using uh, this button, the new session button. And here in these suggestion boxes, we have four suggestions that demonstrate four different types of work Leo can help you do. Uh, and I'll demonstrate it right away. So as I mentioned, this is the chat interface. We use this interface to activate all of Leo's features and capabilities. And to demonstrate those, I'll, I'll run a small scenario of work. So suppose I'm working on this new uh, project, this new robot that I want to have. It's a, it's a firefighting robot. And right now, my job is to design the suspension system. But this is you know, something I've never done before. So I'll have Leo help me. I have like a basic grasp of it, but I want Leo to help me get a deeper understanding of the design process. So I'll tell Leo I'm working on a autonomous robot. How do you spell autonomous? Robotic vehicle. You don't really know how to spell. You don't need to know. Um, I need help designing the suspension system. It's meant to travel through debris easily. What would you recommend? Field or track is the first question. What other types of suspension should I consider? Let's see what Leo gives me. Now, in this AI chat, it's very different from other AI chats you may be familiar with. First of all, you can see Leo makes a plan here of the way he's going to answer my question. So I can answer, I can ask very complicated things and, and use cases, and Leo's going to make a plan how to best answer it using all of its capabilities. So first you can see the plan. You can see it's a, it's a solid plan. It makes sense. And then the information Leo retrieves when getting technical information is based on a library of, of data, of engineering data that we collected. So we're talking about guidelines, handbooks, uh, you know, the Bibles of engineering, over you know, a million pages Leo scanned through to get the answer for each answer. And when Leo builds the answer and gives me this information, it gives me the source from which it took the answer. And this is done so I can I can go into the source, I can see the name of the book, Autonomous Robots. It's kind of what I wanted in the first place. And I can read into it if it's really interesting, or I can just use this to verify that Leo is using good sources for, uh, for what I want, for what I ask. And this is to help me gain confidence in the answers I get from Leo. This prevents hallucinations, this prevents getting answers from you know, some Reddit form uh, that you can't really rely on when you're doing actual engineering work. And you get a bunch of sources, and Leo takes only the best and most relevant sources for your answer. Uh, so here I have, you know, for wheeled, for tracked, what I asked for, advantages, disadvantages, and other types I should consider. And we, we really do have a kind of a wide selection of different sources. So it doesn't matter if I'm an expert in one field, I can get expertise through Leo in different fields in different types of work. Um, yeah, so this is like a general question, and Leo is also kind enough to summarize it in a table, which is very nice. Uh, now the next thing I'm going to work on is 
I want it's a more practical question. Like I have an actual requirement in my project that now has to do with, uh, you know, it's a firefighting robot. So now I want to get water up to the fourth floor to put out a fire. Uh, so I'll tell Leo for my robot, I need to put out fires that are up to four stories high in a building. What water flow would I need to put out a fire in an apartment? I just want to get an estimate and calculate required water pressure to reach the fourth floor. So we have here two kind of practical questions. I actually want him to help me calculate the water pressure required to reach that high up. I, I can do this myself, but it would take a while to find the right you know, equation and, and make sure it's the right thing. And here, Leo kind of does this for me. I just want to have a little glance at the plan. So he's going to determine water flow, calculate required water pressure. Yeah, this looks good. Trust in the plan. And first off, I want to see the estimated water flow required. So, okay, yeah, this looks good. Makes sense. And now to calculate the water pressure, first Leo is going to retrieve all the equations required to do the calculation with all the parameters we got before about the uh, required flow and do a calculation. Leo does this in Python because language models are not good for calculations, so we do it in Python. You don't need to know Python to do this. Leo does it for you. And the answer we get is required water pressure is about 17 PSI. So I guess we'll have to try it out to see if it actually works, but that seems about right looking at these uh, calculations. Uh, so great. So now we have another thing I want. Okay, so I know the pressure I want. I know the suspension system I want. I've done all this work in the background. Now I want to get a pump to, to work, to do this. So I'll, I'll ask you to find a pump for me. Find a pump that can handle, or better say deliver, this flow and pressure. And Leo has the entire context of, of this conversation, so it knows what we're talking about. It knows what the parameters need to be. And it's not only that, but using this natural language processor to, to search for standard parts, basically, it means I can I can search based on intent and I don't even need to use these exact parameters. Like if I just wanted the strongest pump available from a certain vendor, I can just ask for the strongest pump. I don't need to be precise in what I'm asking for. Uh, okay, so we can get some more information, open it up in the original. This is a McMaster uh, pump, so you can open it up, see the original uh, definition here, download the CAD file, uh, and this, by the way, if you work with the desktop version of the app, uh, this would actually open, if you download it, it will open directly in your CAD editor, whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, so we got some pumps and, and see in really a few minutes we, we made big leaps in the work that we had to do. Uh, so now I got all this technical information, but what if I just want, you know, I'm just starting this project. I want to convey my idea. I want to talk about the design without doing many steps of design. So for that we have the ideation module. And now we'll ask Leo, make a concept of this fire fighting robotic vehicle I'm working on. Uh, it should have tracks and a powerful water cannon on top. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, so Leo realizes I want to make a concept, transfers me over to the ideation module, and here it makes a visual description, a product description of the prompt I gave it. And this is done, so when I do generate, I can get three types of assets that should help me with the concept conceptualization process. So the first asset I get, let's just call it yeah, the first asset I get are these concepts, the visual concepts, 2D images that look like rendered uh, 
product. So this one I think is kind of cute. It's kind of nice. I have all these different controls. I can uh, edit stuff out if I don't want. I can make variants. Like here, if I like this idea and I want to explore it, I can, if I want, I can sketch my own sketch. If I have like a pattern, I can sketch nicely. It gives out nice results. I can upload a reference image if I want it to be similar to something else. And you see, these are all, these are all pretty nice. They look like actual products. Uh, so this is to, you know, convey the idea better than words. Uh, but usually when you start a project, you do need to, to, to have some words to accompany it. So for that, we have this product summary, which is a type of SOW document. Here you can see the preview of it. And it can generate a full report here in this module. It takes a couple of minutes. It runs in the background, so I don't really need to touch it. Uh, but it gets like a nine-page report of everything technical that has to do with the project. So what uh, sub-assemblies I'm going to have in this, what, what materials I need to source, standards to comply by, what tests I need to do, and all that everything that has to do with the uh, scope of the project. Uh, so I'll get this document and from this document, I can, I'm not gonna need everything because it's very comprehensive. It just throws up data at you. You can take parts of that and make what's relevant for you for your project and you can do it pretty fast. Um, let's just see if it came up with the first page, not yet, it's fine. So from these images, I can keep developing my idea. If I like this one, for instance, I can make a 3D model of it. It's a mesh model, so it's not going to be manufacturable. I mean, you can print it, uh, but it is, it's still a mesh. It doesn't have features, but you can open it up in any CAD software you're using, and it's a full 3D model that's going to be very similar to the image you see here. So it's another way of representing and conveying my idea and sharing it between people on my team, and they can use it to integrate their parts, their systems to put on uh, my little robot, or to use it as part of a bigger system, again, for integration tests. Uh, so that's another nice use case for this. We'll just wait for it a few more seconds till it generates. And meanwhile, let's see, we already have the first chapter of our uh, document, which keeps generating in the background, and you can save this. It's, uh, it's a big help for people who don't like to make documents, like myself. Uh, okay, so we got the 3D mesh. And you can see it's a, it's a cute little mesh, similar to the, to the image. It, it adheres pretty closely to the image, but still this is an AI model. So every time I generate a 3D mesh, it's gonna come out slightly different. I can do this one if I wanna check it out, uh, just to see, like explore a different design. And, and you see like, if I'm, I'm doing this for like a few minutes, but if you'd actually work on this for an hour, you can get like five to 10 good concepts. You'd have the documentation, you'd have images to represent it and you'd have this model that you can play around with, different models of the concept. So it's a really nice jumpstart to any project that you're doing. Now back to the chat, and now I'll go over to the desktop app, which is very similar. It's a little bit of a wider screen, so I think it's uh, cropped up here. Uh, basically, what I wanna show you is every feature I talked about, from the engineering chat and the part retrieval, uh, to the ideation, I can expand the abilities once I have it integrated with a Windows directory, a sync directory in my computer. And I'll just, just so we can get the, the entire thing, I just want to have it like this, Oop, not like that, like this, and like this. Okay, much better. Uh, so this is a desktop app, and here you see in my desktop app I have a library button. So in my library you can see I have two sync directories. And in these directories I have my own parts. You can see these are my own parts, like they have meaningless names like piston, piston ring. It's like just a generic name of something that I, that I designed at some point. And now when I'll do uh, chat, oh and by the way, also like in here I have some, there's some still some issues with the syncing. But I can have images, I can have PDF files, I can have any type of file that I want to sync with Leo, I can have in these uh, directories on my network. Uh, so now when I go into chat and I do a whatever engineering question, the sources are gonna be also from my database. So from my PDFs, from my guidelines in my company, and I can leverage the data in my organization to do design. And I can do this for engineering questions, I can do this for getting standard parts, and I can do this for uh, generating concepts. So it's a huge benefit. It multiplies the power of Leo when you allow it to leverage your organizational data. 
Uh, yeah, so that's all for me. This is all going to be available. This is all either available, like as you've seen on the web version, or going to be available in the coming month to uh, what I showed you on the web version is all going to be available to our uh, pro users uh, who pay the pro tier version of the software. And the sync directory is going to be available to uh, business tier customers. So using your organization's data will be available to our business plan customers. Uh, they'll be able to leverage their organizational data. Thank you very much to everyone. And uh, I'll pass this on to Moti to talk about some more future stuff.